Hey guys, welcome to part two where we are going to be looking at uh, using Godot to do HTTP requests and we are going to be building a full REST API with the server and allowing Godot to connect to the server and display a leaderboard. So in this uh, part two, we'll be looking at how we can get our application going so that we have a REST API and we can then start making connections to this REST API. So if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, uh, do so now and hit that notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of these tutorials in future. And if you do end up liking the video, please do like below and always leave a comment if you have any questions or you have any concerns. So thank you guys, uh, let's jump into this tutorial. So the very first thing you need, and uh, I'm using a Linux operating system here. I'm not using uh, Windows today because uh, Linux is just a little bit easier to configure for this, but uh, you should be able to follow it quite easily just by doing some research uh, to install your various uh, things. So on Linux and Mac OS, the uh, procedure is pretty much the same and on Windows it's slightly different uh, but it should be quite easy to get everything installed as well. So if you are using Windows um, I would uh, suggest that you get something called XAMPP uh, which will basically ship with uh, all your uh, PHP etc. So if you look at um, just this website over here so you'll see you can just download it and it will be an installer. You could do the same with Linux and OS X as well, but uh, I prefer to use command line installation uh, using with uh, Linux. So in uh, Windows, you are going to just use that and then it will start up a server which has PHP and everything for you already. So how you will then know if you have PHP, if you're on Windows, uh, you just want to open a command prompt and uh, then just type php minus v uh, to get the version of your php. We're going to be using uh, 7 and up. Uh, I've got the latest version at the point of uh, shooting this video. So that will uh, just be needed to be able to run Lumen correctly and without any hassles. So if you're on Linux uh, to install uh, php etc, you just want to uh, run sudo app get install php7 and there are a few packages we want to install as well so php7 sqlite and we want to install php mb string and i'm going to show you why you need this uh, in a second uh, so let's first just look at the laravel lumen uh, framework so laravel lumen just google that and you should end up with uh, this website over here. So open that up. So just to give you a bit of background, Lumen is a slightly smaller micro framework version of Laravel, which is a quite a mainstream and um, popular framework in PHP, but uh, it just basically just has the REST API capabilities and it's just a lot simpler to work with than the full Laravel package, uh, especially with the uh, APIs, etc. And uh, when we go over to documentation here and we look at the installation notes, so you'll see there are some requirements here. So OpenSSL, a PDO, and MB string. So you need to make sure that you install those. And uh, when you do PHP 7 like this and MB string, and you'll need a couple of others uh, just to get this going. So and then PHP 7 dash MySQL and PHP 7 dash PDO. And once you've installed all of those, then you should have the requirements to be able to run Lumen. So I've, I've already installed all of these. Uh, if you are installing on Mac, you will use uh, brew uh, to install your packages. So you'll just use brew install PHP 7-PDO, etc., whatever you require. So just go ahead and do that. Um, for me, I need to still install the SQLite package. So I'm going to sudo apt-get install php 7-SQLite uh, because that's what we'll be using. I think it's SQLite 3. Or uh, I don't need to do the PHP 7. Okay, there we go. And then just install that. So once that's now installed, then uh, you will be able to use uh, SQLite. 
and now we can move on to the next part of the installation so you'll see over here you need something called composer to get composer you'll just go over to google and search composer over here and what you need to do is click on download and then if you are using linux or mac you'd be using uh, these commands to be able to install composer if you're using Windows, there will be an executable link, I believe, here for you to just go and download and install. And that will then make this uh, composer a command available to you. So what we'll do now is we'll install Lumen and we'll start creating our project. So let's just do composer. We'll just copy this and then we paste this into our terminal and just wait for that to install. So I'm going to pause the video while I wait because this is going to take a while. So we're back from installing Lumen and now we actually need to run it. But now when you run it, you will find that it doesn't work. So in order to get Lumen to work, uh, we need to basically go and add it to our bash RC file, which we'll also have in Mac OS. Uh, on Windows, uh, this should be fine. It will work without any of this. Uh, Composer would have taken care of the environment variables for you. So we'll uh, need to do this manually on Linux. So what I'll do is I'm going to just sudo nano uh, dot bash rc, which is the commands that will run when my operating system boots. I'll just go all the way down to the end and I'm going to add in this line over here, export uh, path is equal to the current path and we'll append our folder which is our home directory dot config uh, config slash composer slash vendor slash bin and we'll just close it off write the file and exit out of it then we just simply need to set the source so just to reload this uh, bash rc file and we can then try running lumen so now you'll see that lumen actually works so what we need to do now to create a lumen project uh, we'll just go type lumen and new and we'll call this leaderboard so now you'll see it's going to install a whole bunch of different things and we'll then have a boilerplate for our project and our REST API. So you can just go ahead and wait for this to finish and I'm going to end the video here because we need to actually start building out the code in the next video and it would just uh, be a waste to try and do that in this video. So thanks again guys for watching and I will see you in the next uh, part where we will actually start creating this REST API. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.